What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Samsung Galaxy A05. Now, if you aren't familiar with Samsung's A series, it's their lineup of budget and mid-range devices. And this one, the A05, is the cheapest, lowest tier, least specced one of the bunch. Now, I gotta be honest, I have been <clears throat> critical of Samsung's A0 phones in the past, but it's justified. I mean, the A03s had micro USB ports for charging. The A04s last year were a little better, but they still ran One UI Core and struggled to do basic things well, like loading a YouTube video or snapping pictures. This year, the new A05 seems to have better specs across the board that will hopefully make it a decent, super affordable smartphone option rather than a hunk of e-waste and if you only have like a hundred bucks to spend, I'm hoping that this is a smartphone I can finally recommend. There's obviously a lot to talk about with the A05, and I'm gonna fill you in on everything else you need to know, but first things first, let's just quickly unbox it so I can show you what comes inside if you decide to buy one for yourself. Cutting through the stickers there and sliding off the sleeve, the first thing you'll see is a familiar Samsung stamped packet of documents, and hallelujah, a USB-C to USB-C C cable for charging the phone. Underneath that stuff, there is the A05 itself in all of its very green glory, and the only other thing stuck there at the bottom of the box is a SIM ejector tool. No wall plug, no case, nothing else included, as is the usual now with these smartphones. So with all that stuff out of the way, here is the new A05 once again, and I first want to go over pricing and availability since I think that's probably the single most important thing about this phone. The A05's full retail price is about $150. I say about only because it kind of varies depending on where you buy it from and where in the world you're located. Some places have it listed for as high as $160. I've seen other listings for as low as $100. And there's a few RAM and storage configuration options you can choose from, four or six gigs of RAM, 64 or 128 gigs of storage. Regardless of all that, this is a, dare I say, cheap phone easily the cheapest new current Samsung device. Emphasis on current, yes, you can get a used A03S for $47, but that's not a current Samsung device. The A05 is, and it is a fraction of the price of any other Samsung smartphone. If you want to do some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can snag this phone at its cheapest price, but no matter what, you shouldn't pay even anywhere close to 200 bucks for this phone. For that price, you actually do get a Samsung smartphone that sort of looks like one of the higher tier devices in the lineup. At 6.7 inches, this phone is massive. The screen is 6.7 inches corner to corner, but the phone itself has an even bigger footprint than that thanks to its thick borders and chunky chin that yield you barely an 82% screen to body ratio. The old school camera notch finishes off its decisively budget look from the front, but on the bright side, if you like to use big displays for all your YouTube video watching and social media scrolling, this is literally one of the biggest phones you can buy right now. Just keep in mind, it's quite the handful. Around back, Samsung redesigned this phone to not quite match the S series, but sort of mimic it. It's an all plastic phone all around. The back, the frame, there's no IP rating or waterproofing. It's a budget build, and those lines that look like a texture, well, they're like under the plastic, so you can't feel them. But previous A0 devices have this awful play phone looking plastic rear cover and even cheaper build than this. So the A05's design and form factor is an improvement. And from five feet away, it looks like any other Samsung smartphone on the market. Taking a look around at all the important bits, on the left side, you have your dual physical SIM and SD card tray. There's no eSIM support for this phone, but with the SD card slot, it doesn't matter if you got stuck with the 64 gigabyte model like I did, you can 10X that storage for cheap with an SD card from Amazon, which you'll probably wanna do since a third of that storage is used up out of the box. On the right side, familiar volume and power buttons and no fingerprint sensor, not on the power button, not under the display. Face unlock is the only biometric security option on this phone, which is a little weird, but I'm sure that was a cost cutting measure. Nothing really at the top there. On the bottom, there is a headphone jack alongside the USB-C 
port and the speaker, standalone earpiece at the top above the selfie camera up front, and around back, two camera lenses, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Now, one thing that has remained very budget on these A0 devices over the years is the actual display itself. And that's once again the story on the A05. Sure, it's a massive screen. At 6.7 inches, you get so much to look at, but the quality of the picture isn't all that great. This is a 1600 by 720 resolution PLS LCD panel. At just 262 pixels per inch, it's far from sharp. And in fact, it's just low res enough to pick out those pixels if you look closely at some on-screen text. On top of that, the LCD panel makes makes this phone not very colorful and not very bright, especially if you use this phone in bright environments like outdoors, for example, where you'll wind up getting a ton of glare. And obviously, it's a 60 hertz panel, which means if you're like me and you're used to using high refresh rate screens, the taps, touches, and visuals on this phone feel less than smooth. Now, depending on your preferences and your perspective, the display might not even be the worst thing in the world. If you've only ever used these budget-friendly A-series devices, then it's the same screen you've already been looking at. But when you compare this to, say, an A34, which has a Super AMOLED 120 hertz, 1000 nits of brightness, 1080 resolution screen for like a hundred bucks more, the difference is literally night and day. Of course, this is still the cheapest Samsung smartphone in the lineup, so there's gotta be some more ways in which this phone remains so cheap, but I feel like we're at a point now where even a slightly updated 1080 resolution LCD display should be on this phone, but let me know what you guys think of all that. In pairing that display with the speaker setup, you get an out loud listening experience that is fine, but that's about all I can say. You have just the single bottom speaker there, and yeah, it's pretty muffled and echoey, but I'm not sure what more you could expect. Here's a not so great sounding sample so you can get an idea. When it comes to the specs, the software experience, and actually using this phone, this is where Samsung made some strides in all the areas where I've been most critical. The A05 is powered by the MediaTek Helio G85 chipset, which on the one hand is a many year old sort of low tier CPU. However, it's a tried and true name brand piece of hardware that is eons better than the Helio P85 from the A04 or the Unisoc CPU you from a couple of years ago. On top of that, this phone can be configured with four or six gigs of RAM, like I said, which is a bit more than the base configuration of years past, and 64 or 128 gigs of storage. Here are those Geekbench scores if you want to compare some actual numbers to other devices. Yeah, that doesn't look great, but hear me out, as the cheapest phone in the lineup, Samsung has to do everything they can to both have this phone cost as little as possible to manufacture so that it can be sold for as little money as possible and still make the phone like, I don't know, usable for everyday tasks. That second part is what they had issues with in previous phones, but this A05, at least out of the box, feels noticeably better to actually use. It has the Android 14 and One UI 6.0 updates already too, and it runs the full version of Android and One UI, not the core version that's plagued previous cheaper phones. And altogether, that means you get an A0 device that for really the first time, doesn't feel like you're using some cheap budget knockoff Android. This is a full-fledged, full-featured Samsung smartphone in every sense, and no, you're not gonna be playing games on this thing at max settings or doing anything crazy like that, but for average, everyday app browsing, maps, schoolwork, work, work, this is a phone that feels like it can handle those sorts of daily tasks. But of course, I'm gonna continue testing all of this over the next few weeks, and I might be jinxing myself, but this could finally be the entry-level Samsung device that's actually worth getting for once. One thing that's always been enticing on all the A-series Samsung phones is the battery. This phone in particular has a big 5,000 milliamp one crammed inside. It makes sense, this phone is so massive, but what Samsung improved here is the charging speed. You get 25 watt wired speeds versus 
the, I don't even know how slow it speeds from previous A0 phones, like 15 watt or maybe even less than that with the micro USB ports. So not only will this phone last a full day and then some on a single charge, but when it does finally die, it'll juice up in a couple of hours just as fast as actually even the higher tier Samsung devices nowadays. You don't get wireless charging though or any other power or charging features, but I'll take the 25 watt speeds for now. That's a good enough improvement. Finally, when it comes to the cameras, I don't think it should come as any surprise to say that the A05 doesn't really have the best setup in the world. But Samsung brought some changes to this phone that actually I think are more practical versus just slapping on random lenses and shooting modes that are gimmicky and unnecessary. The dual lens setup on the back of this phone consists of a 50 megapixel f1.8 aperture main shooter and then a 2 megapixel depth sensor. There's no macro lens, which is fine, that always felt like sort of a cop out, an extra lens with Without much utility, but no wide angle lens on this phone is kind of a bummer. That's the most useful of the lenses that's always missing. And the selfie camera is an improved, but only barely, 8 megapixel lens now. Inside the camera app, you still get a very bare bones set of features and functions 10x digital zoom, basic pro controls, panorama, night mode, slow mo all that sort of stuff that's been offered for years and years, but you also get some sort of robust portrait mode controls that allow you to adjust the depth of field and presumably take advantage of that secondary depth sensing lens. You don't get 4K video recording though, and as far as the actual pictures themselves, well, they still sort of look budgety. They're soft without a ton of detail, the colors are a little too saturated, and I had some trouble actually getting the rear lens to focus on me, but when it did, things looked a little better. This is just still very much a budget camera setup. I feel like Samsung is using hardware from years ago, and the software and CPU can't do much to compensate. You're probably going to take perfectly fine pictures of your pets and your kids and your food, but with smartphone camera tech being so, so good nowadays, Days, this feels like the furthest step back from any smartphone with a price tag higher than, say, $300. Now, I'm not totally convinced that this new A05 is the entry-level, affordable Samsung smartphone of my dreams yet, but I can't imagine I'll be ranting about it as much as previous A0 phones. This feels to me like an improvement in the areas that matter most, namely performance and usability. But it's a nicer looking phone too, and it charges quicker as well. Those improvements don't sound like much, but they're significant in this case on a phone like this. And most importantly, this is a phone that's kind of intended for folks who don't have the money or just don't want to spend the money on something more expensive. If that's the case, a phone like this should still be usable and reliable, and it seems like this year the A05 is exactly that. But what do you guys think? Did Samsung improve this phone enough for you to maybe consider buying one? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.